Okay, welcome to uh, today's video where we're going to be doing a motion breakdown on uh, government side of the UCL IV round two. Uh, I'll also be doing the opposition side uh, probably soon after this video is released, uh, which I think personally is uh, the more interesting side. And it seems that people are struggling with that, but because, you know, you ha we have to have continuity, we have to start with uh, gov side. Okay, so the motion is basically uh, info slide. There exists a technology, the guiltometer, which measures the amount of guilt a person feels about the particular crime they have committed. It also contains information on the average level of guilt level for any crime, so that it can be, so that it can quantify how much more or less average guilt an individual feels for a crime they have committed. And the motion is using the guiltometer. This house would use guilt as a mitigating circumstance, circumstance decreasing punishment and a lack of its of a lack of it as an aggravating circumstance increasing punishment in sentencing cool uh very complex words uh yeah so basically uh we're gonna use this guiltometer to either increase or decrease punishment and right now in the status quo we're not using it so as usually how this video plays out first i'm going to do statements and then i'm going to analyze uh, each of these statements and how it can be a path to victory uh cool so I really wasn't able to think of a lot of arguments on this motion, which I think means that this motion isn't a particularly good one, uh, especially for a closing garment. I think there's a lot more to say on op, but in general, I was able to think of two large chunks of ideas. The first is that this will lead to less criminals due to lesser sentencing uh, down the line. And secondly, that this will lead to more just sentencing. Um, I think there are possibly some arguments around the nature of, let's say, how rich people can get away with sentencing uh, and, you know, this uh, stopping their capacity to, uh, like, do that. But uh, this kind of falls under more just sentencing. So this is not very particularly good motion because there are two broad lines of analysis that a closing team on government side can potentially extend on them by providing new mechanism and things like that. But honestly, it isn't, like too like wide in terms of the options of arguments that you have uh but still we're going to analyze both of these arguments and see how they can be different paths to victory cool so let's analyze the first uh which is that this will lead to less criminals in the long term the general thesis of this argument is that currently uh criminals are over sentenced and they stay longer periods of time within prison which leads to them becoming greater criminals the example is you do petty theft you sell some drugs to, in order to survive you go to prison you become a bigger criminal uh after you get out of prison by now performing armed robberies selling harder drugs or working in for example prostitution human trafficking and things like that um you could provide some reasons as to why this is true uh i mean not in terms of uh, how the process happens. That's something that we're going to analyze in a bit. But why over-sentencing happens in the status quo, you could point out to, for example, how the criminal system is currently biased to specific people. Uh, you could point to, example, how there's a hard on crime narrative uh, which pushes like judges to put people in prison and stuff like that. How these uh, specific socioeconomic groups that we're talking about have less capacity to defend themselves. Often they are, uh, you, they are dependent on, let's say, state-given uh, uh, state uh, lawyers that can defend them and things like that. I personally think that this is a burden that doesn't need anal analysis and won't necessarily be challenged within the debate. And in general, in debating is kind of accepted as one. But if you want to give such analysis, you could. Like, why currently uh, over like people are over sentenced and stuff like that. Uh, but then the actual analysis that you have to give is how, like, how does the process of you becoming a bigger uh, criminal happen? So, like, why does this happen? Uh, in general, there are broadly, there are many reasons, but there are the four reasons that you could explain. Uh, the first is that when you are put in prison, after you've done the petty uh, crime, you're forced to join in a gang uh, because of protection that you have to do. Uh, this is, for example, uh, you know, like you being there and uh, people threatening to like abuse you, people threatening to harm you. Uh, there, people are already divided uh, based on the gang, so you have to uh, join a particular gang in order to... Um, in order to basically protect yourself. Second reason is that you could easily get hooked on drugs as a coping mechanism within your self li cell life. You know, like when you literally live in a cell and it's super depressing and bad for you, uh, you start like doing drugs and things like that to cope, uh, which in general like harms your mental capacity, which in general harms your uh, like ability to basically function. And later when you go outside, you are hooked on drugs uh, and you want to get more drugs. So you have to uh, do more crime in order to get the money to do that. 
I also forgot how to explain the first mechanism. The first mechanism is after you get out of uh, uh, after you get out of jail, uh, people like remember you. They're members of the gang outside, so they usually find you and they tell you, "Come with us, do this crime and stuff like that." Uh, thirdly, you could th third reason you could point out to is that there are not that many prison resources. So, like there, for example, there aren't that many counselors who can help you reform. Uh, there aren't that many, like uh, maybe like the infrastructure in the jail itself is pretty bad. Like there aren't that many books, uh, or like the books are all dated for you to reeducate yourself. Uh, there are not that many options for you to be uh, to become like a better person, so that later you can get a job. And finally, you could point out to the fact that living conditions within the prison are horrible. Uh, you may have like multiple pr people in one prison cell, uh, which leads to you having like a horrible experience. Maybe you getting into fights with these people, uh, not being able to exist uh, together properly, which makes you. Uh, uh, you know, more and more of a hardened individual, which makes you more and more likely to become a criminal later down the line. Bottom line is all of these things make it likely that you will be a bigger criminal. So in fact, you spending more time in prison, even though it's counterintuitive to some people, makes you a bigger criminal down the line. So what is the change then? There are basically two things that change. Uh, the first is that you stay less crime uh, time in the prison. So for example, instead of you being sentenced to two years, you can stay six to nine months, something like that. Uh, firstly, this means that you are more likely to still be hopeful since you can relativize the time that you are being there. You can tell yourself, I'm here just six months, I'm here just nine months. Uh, so like it is likely for you like not to join a gang because you think, okay, I really don't need this protection. I don't need to screw over my life forever. Uh, you can listen to the counselor uh, who is in that, uh, who is like trying to talk to you to make your life better. You are less likely to uh, be hooked on drugs and to do all the things that are explained there. But also, secondly, you have time enough to reflect on it. So you have six months to reflect on the fact that you did a crime. If you had other options in reality, if you could have uh, made your life better and things like that, but not enough uh, time to harm yourself. Like not so much time uh, that you will become like uh, depressed, nihilistic, and you to be opposed to this type of thing. D this time is crucial because now you can have a better capacity to understand the crime that you did and why crime is bad, but not like be pushed hard enough uh, for you to uh, want to do uh, more crime once you get out. And the second thing that changes is that there are less people within the prisons overall, because if less people are uh, sentenced to a lesser extent, that, that means that there are, for, uh, that, that means, for example, that there are less people in the prison. This means the prison jail cells are less overcrowded, meaning that people have like a better standard of living there, meaning that the risk of you getting into fights and stuff like that are less, but also there are more resources per each individual prisoner. Now there, you have a greater likelihood to, for example, talk individually with the counselor. Uh, you can use uh, public spaces, like public spaces within the prison more to re-educate yourself and do these type of things, which means that the machinery of the prison starts working better when they're when it's less overcrowded in this particular moment both of these things mean that you are less likely to become a greater criminal then the final burden that we need to analyze is why is it likely that these specific groups of people that we're talking about you know first time offenders are likely to feel the most amount of guilt thus they're likely to have the least amount of sentencing uh there are probably three reasons here the first is that these these are crimes out of necessity so pe the people that usually do uh this would otherwise not do crime like they don't necessarily feel like becoming criminals Actually, these people usually do uh, this crime uh, because out of the, because they're forced to, because they don't have any food, or maybe they want to give some money for their family and things like that. So it's highly likely that these people will feel shame and guilt once they're caught, you know, because like they uh, they feel like they are how do you say like uh, bad within society. They they did a bad, a bad thing and they they wouldn't uh, like otherwise do it. Thus, they're likely to feel very very guilty. They're not like uh, people who are very very like hardened. Uh, it will do crime. Like obviously, there are a proportion of them that are like that. But a wide majority of them are, in general, people who just feel guilt uh, when they're doing this crime. Secondly, they're likely to be young, uh, well, maybe not kids, but, you know, like uh, between 16, 17, 18, 19 year old kids uh, who you can very easily like guilt trip them, you know, because they haven't lived so long. They have an authority bias. So like uh, and, and, you know, you could have easily told them that you could have done something else. Why did you do this? This could be the parents talking to them. This could be their friends. This could be the cops. It's very easy to invoke this emotion within these uh, kids once they're uh, once they're like caught uh meaning that they're highly likely to feel guilt meaning that they're highly likely to get a lesser sentence you know in comparison to someone who's on the other side of things has done crime for a very long time and finally like in general crime is looked down upon and this is an accepted narrative within society 
Uh, the problem is like the more climb you do, the less likely you are to feel guilty because you know you the more you've normalized it, the more you've accustomed yourself to it. But it definitely in the beginning, in the first crime that you uh, have done, you're likely to feel guilty um, because you know like it's something that's not accepted. It's a narrative that you uh, in general connect with, and uh, you are likely to feel this way. Bottom line is there's a substantial amount of people who will feel guilty in the first time offenders who will get lesser sentences and would reform themselves. What are the impacts? There are two of them. Firstly, future people won't be harmed. And as we outlined, this is a huge impact since many of these people uh, like who do crime tomorrow might do worse crime, violent crimes, armed robberies, uh, abduction of people, selling of hard drugs, and things like that, which, you know, ca cause a lot of societal damage. This is a how you say, big harm that if we're able to alleviate uh, and if we're able to stop these people, uh, even if they don't live perfect lives, at least not become greater or worse or criminals, means that we are, uh, how do you say, this is a substantial victory within the debate in terms of future victims. But secondly, if you, uh, like, it's a harm, like, uh, if you it will have on the net less uh, criminals, and this is also a harm on the criminals and on themselves, because these people live horrible lives of a cycle of doing crime, going into prison, doing crime, going into prison, where uh, basically, you know, within the prison themselves, they are beaten up. Uh, maybe in certain cases, they face sexual violence as well uh, in, in, in these type of moments, which means that they live a very horrible life if we were able to stop like the the cycle when they're young so that they grow up to live again maybe not the perfect life but like not a life of crime that's a very big impact on them themselves and finally this is also an economic burden that society takes up literally a tax burden because we have to pay money to put these prisoners on somewhere but also these prisoners are not doing societally good things uh within like you know like they're not having a job they're not contributing to society they're doing societally negative things uh and stuff like that so this is like a clear path to victory that if you run from og you could very easily win uh, after that you could just run the that this is a more just uh sentencing case um and for the first basic burden is why is the current just uh system not just and here you have to give uh the explanation of proportional sentencing which the way you explain these type of things is with some kind of intuition uh, so like an intuition that i would give is would we chop off the hands of a thief like is this something that we would do most people would say no to this question most people would say someone who stole uh like a piece of bread doesn't deserve to have their chop their hands chopped off uh we think that this is a barbaric uh type of punishment and it shouldn't be uh allowed why, why do we feel this way because we think that there is this principle of just desserts uh and this is why like because this is a small crime we don't think that such a harmful things should be done as punishment but on the flip side we would for example consider the death penalty this doesn't mean that we would use the death penalty but we would at least consider the death penalty for uh for people who have done very very violent crimes you know serial killers uh people who have uh, abused people and things like that they probably des they may deserve to like if they have given up on their humanity in a way by produ by doing these crimes then maybe they deserve to be ta their life to be taken uh from them in this particular moment so you know, this is the spectrum that we, uh, as human beings, agree that, there, that this is the principle of just desert. So the bottom line is arriving at what is the correct sentence or like the correct proportion of sentencing is a very big moral consideration that we as individuals, as wider society, really, really care about. Uh, so basically, then the question becomes, why is guilt an important factor when we are considering this type of things? Uh, for the first and most basic thing is that it shows your capacity to repent. Because if you feel no guilt, then that means that tomorrow we don't have any guarantee that you will not do the same thing or very, uh, very worse thing. Because think about it. The way human beings correct their decision making is by first feeling guilt and really internalizing and understanding what is the negative consequences of the action that they have done. Otherwise, if you didn't feel guilt, if you don't feel bad for the thing that you did, let's say uh, you, how do you say, robbed a store or something like that, then we have no guarantee that tomorrow you won't rob a store again because you don't feel this negative emotion, this shame that is connected necessarily with guilt. Uh, then for such people, it is legitimate for us to put them in prison for a longer period of time. And for people that do feel this emotion, do have the capacity to repent, it, uh, it should be uh, like a good for us to give them mitigatory factors in terms of their sentencing so they have a proportional sentence when they're operating with this but secondly uh, ah and this is actually the second reason which is about mitigatory sentences mitigatory factors it's easier for us to assess these type of things when you feel uh, when we know that you are feeling guilt because then we can ask questions and gain a better understanding of the con of like the circumstances of you doing the crime 
whether it is, for example, that you are starving and you stole the bread because you needed to feel yourself. So the emotion of starvation really, really changed your incentive system. And otherwise, you would not do this. Whether it's, for example, uh, you being in very uh, big uh, emotional circumstances like uh, that broke your mental state. Like, for example, your partner cheating on you. And that's why you did the crime that you did in this particular moment. And absent of this emotional condition, you would feel normal. And the way that we assess this normality is with the quantity of guilt that you feel after the fact, after you've done this particular uh, action. So we basically can quantify and understand the amount of blindness you had or, or uh, brain fog that you have. Uh, maybe that's a, not a correct word, but that's the word I'm using to basically understand uh, how blind that you were based on the amount of guilt that you feel later so that you we can connect two and two together and thus give you a lesser sentencing. Uh, so for these reasons, this is a more just and more moral way of sentencing people. The way you impact this is that this is uh, 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 like affecting many people that are all the time facing uh, criminal charges, that are all the time facing these type of things. So arriving at the just system, the morally correct system is something that is important to them, but it's something that wider society and wider proportion of people care about. And if you just give a very simple intuition pump, if you ask a person on the street about this, they'll most likely have an opinion or talk about it. So then it should be a more important consideration within uh, the debate itself. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I wasn't really able to think of more uh, arguments here. You can comment if uh, there are better ones uh, that I could have run and maybe I could uh, do a part two video of this. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, after this one, I'll do the opposition, which I see that some people struggled with. Uh, and we can uh, talk about that uh, in the next video. Like and subscribe and see you later.